What's wrong, Jordan? I'm trying to read my my Bible, and I know God's word is important and given to me mm-hmm. for me to learn and use and all this stuff, but it's really hard to navigate. I can't find anything in here. Yeah. I know how you feel. I feel like there's so many stories and people yeah. in it, but I don't know how to find anything in it. Me neither. Well, well here, hand it to me. I don't know everything, but I know a couple of things about the Bible. I know that it's one big book, but it's made up of a lot of little books. In fact, there's 66 little books. And then it's also separated into two sections. So we have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And all of it all combined into this big hole. All the pieces turn into a big hole for God's big story. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. I know. I wish there was a way we could learn more, discover more things. I know, that would be great. I know. We can be detected. <gasps> yes. Ooh. All right, everybody. Get on your detective hats. This is mine. Um, That's a silly hat. Well, it's a silly detective hat. Okay. All right, guys. Also, let's get out our magnifying glasses so we can look for something or maybe a clue. Let's look look for clues. clues. Looking, looking, looking. I don't see any clues. Guys, look what I found. (gasps) Whoa! Look at this. Ooh. What is it? I mean, it's a picture of a mountain, but what do you think it means? Oh, look, there's a note on the back. Okay, I'll read it. Okay, so our clue is a mountain. And it's because it's teaching us about the five first books of the Bible called the Law, or the Pentateuch, because it's the first five books. And we know that Moses got God's Law, or the Ten Commandments, from the top of a mountain. So now we know that when we read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, those are the books of the Law. So I think... We need to look around the room, and you guys at home can help us. Look around the room and find any books with this clue on it, and then we'll know what we found. Let's go! Okay, so what did we find? I've got Genesis and Exodus. I've got Leviticus and Numbers. And I have Deuteronomy. Okay, here's what we should do. Let's put them in order on the shelf, and then we'll come back here and try to memorize them. Great idea. Okay, Genesis, Exodus. Leviticus and Numbers. And then I have Deuteronomy. Okay, let's try to memorize these. I have a special trick that helps you learn it. And it's a little clap called lap, lap, clap. And we'll say the word, we'll say the books in order. And you guys can help me after the first one's done. You ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Come on. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. One more time. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Good job! Good job! That was so much fun. So much fun. Except I still have some questions. Okay, what are they? Like, who are in these books? And right. Like, what are some of the main stories? You know what, Josh? I think I can help you with that. Okay, so first, God had always existed, even before people and light and everything. So with his word, God created the whole earth. That's creation. So he made night and day and light and dark and fish and puppies and trees and flowers. And then people. He made Adam, but he was alone. And God said that was no good. So then he made Eve and there was no sin. And they were besties with God and they went on walks with him. But then Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and sin entered the world, and they had to leave the garden, and their relationship with God was broken. But don't worry. God had a big plan to rescue his people. We'll hear more about that in a minute. So people started to do more and more things. There were more and more people. They started to do more and more things that weren't obedient to God's plan. So God told Noah to build an ark, which is a big boat, which is bananas, because no one had ever seen it rain before. But he obeyed God, he built the boat, and he loaded up a pair of each animals on the earth. And I bet that boat smelled really stinky with all of those animals. So later there was Abraham, and God told him that he would have as many kids as there are stars in the sky, which is like a lot. And some of those kids and grandkids were Isaac, Esau, Jacob, and then we meet Joseph in his colorful little coat. And then a little while later, we have Moses, and he had to go and tell the Pharaoh that God told him to say, let my people go. 
and then there were 10 commandments, and then God's chosen people, the Israelites, were wandering in the desert for a long, long, long time. <sighs> Did that help? I sure did, Mallory. Yes. Okay, but I still have a question. Mm, okay. Why did God give us the law? And why does it even matter to us? What's important about it? That's a great question, Jordan, but I think I know someone who can help us. <gasps> yeah. Oh, goody! Brad, I can't wait. Hi, friends. My name is Lee Fesco. I'm the Director of Discipleship at Christ Presbyterian Church, and I am so excited to tell you a little more about these first five books of the Bible. The first five books of the Bible are sometimes called the Pentateuch, which means five books. We call them the books of the law because they hold the stories, instructions, and laws that God gives to his people, his chosen people, Israel. Did you know that almost all of these books were written by Moses? Can you imagine writing all of these things down for so many people to read so many years later? Jordan, your question is an important question. Why does God want us to have these books of the law? Why do we need them? In these books, God reveals who he is, the creator and sustainer of all life, that he has chosen his people Israel and he shows us how he loves, protects, and teaches them. He gives them the law so they can best know how to love and obey him. These rules aren't because God is mean and grumpy and, and wants to tell us what to do and be a bully. He does this so we can look more like him and his son, Jesus. It's to keep us safe. And isn't that wonderful? Well, that is wonderful. Thank you so much for teaching us about the law. Let's meet back here tomorrow and learn more. Okay. Right. Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus. Hi, friends. It's Jordan. Wasn't that so fun? We have a few more ways that you guys can think, talk, and play, and pray about the books of the Bible. Get your grown-up and look at that user guide, and you can play Bible Hunt with your Books of the Bible cards. Answer discussion questions and pray together. Keep watching this video to learn a new hymn. Check out that Spotify playlist for a song and even a rap that will help you learn the books of the Bible. Our brains are like sponges. You can learn anything through a song. Once you've memorized the new book, make sure you mark it on your Books of the Bible sticker chart with that star sticker. See you next week. Bye! Hello kids, it's Miss Jacqueline here to tell you today's hymn story. We hope you've enjoyed the other two hymns that we've taught you so far. Today's hymn story started over a thousand years ago when the Church of Ireland was passionate about telling people all over the world about Jesus just like missionaries are today. One of Ireland's missionaries was named Columba. Columba was also a poet. And he is the one who sang this Irish hymn for the first time, Be Thou My Vision. Columba loved how the hymn was filled with the names of God. And in singing the hymn, he learned to look for God in this life and in the world all around him. Much later in 1905, Be Thou My Vision was discovered by an English woman named Mary Byrne. She translated the hymn into English, and then in 1912, it was discovered by Eleanor Hull, who put it to music to the tune of Slain. Friends, did you know that hymns, tunes, have names? Well, they do. So Be Thou My Vision was written to that hymn tune, Slain, and the hymn became popular overnight, and it appeared in hymn books soon after. The story of Be Thou My Vision is the story of the gospel. It's where God took two women, a very old tune, and very old lyrics, and put them together and made them new. You Are My Vision is a hymn of new life in the singer's heart, where God shines his forgiveness in a sinful soul. Here's Emily now to teach you the tune, the lyrics, and some fun motions, too. Hey friends, okay, now we are going to learn the motions to the hymn Miss Jacqueline just talked about, You Are My Vision, and we're just going to jump right in with the music, so follow along and watch me to learn the motions. Okay, let's go. Thank you. 
Okay, now we're gonna make a battle shield. You guys ready? Down to us and gave his best 